I'm Peter Block here in Washington, D.C. at ACC 17. With me is Sarah Saberi from the University of Michigan. Sarah is a cardiomyopathy person and has done an interesting trial of exercise with hokum. You know, we always thought exercise may not be great for patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So Sarah, tell me about your trial, a very interesting trial, and what you actually did. We randomized patients to either a usual activity group or an exercise group and had them exercise for 16 weeks. Okay, so uh, the mantra is that's really not the thing that people with hokum should do. So how did you get to this? We found that most patients that we saw in clinic complained about not being able to exercise and felt that their um, emotional well-being was changed in a negative way by the fact that they were physically restricted. We wanted to show them that maybe there was a better way forward. Okay, so this is sort of a groundbreaking trial in, in a sense. So tell me quickly what you did and what the outcomes were in terms of your exercise capacity, how much they actually did. So over a 16-week period, um, period of time, our patients exercised on average somewhere between four and seven days per week, up to about 60 minutes at a time. And in the exercise group, we actually saw a significant improvement in peak VO2, or oxygen consumption. Okay, so the exercise was good for you. Yes. It is good for you. <laughs> It's okay. been shown in so many other populations, including the average Joe walking on the street. It's good for people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as well. Okay, so that's an interesting first point to learn about. So tell me about the bad news here, because obviously one of the concerns that everyone has is sudden death, increase in PVCs, rhythm abnormalities, and so forth. What'd you find? We actually had absolutely no adverse events, no episodes of sustained ventricular tachycardia, sudden cardiac death, or death of any kind. We saw an improvement in PVC burden. We're not exactly sure how to interpret that data. It's an exploratory outcome, and it'll have to be further investigated um, in future trials. When we saw absolutely no difference in non-fatal arrhythmias like uh, atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardia, and non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. Okay. Were you surprised? No. Not Why not? <laughs> because this is what we see in our patients. You know, this is in clinic, you know, I'm constantly advising patients to go out and exercise and, and light to moderate in intensity. And we don't have patients dropping dead. We just don't. Okay. So what I take away from this, Sarah, is that this really shows us that sudden death and bad rhythm disturbances and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are relatively rare events. They are random and rare. Okay, so uh, for all the clinicians out there, give me the last good word on this trial with exercise and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We didn't assess competitive sports. We didn't assess vigorous uh, physical activity. What we did assess was light and moderate intensity activity and saw an improvement in functional capacity, improvement in quality of life. And we think that we devised an exercise program that clinicians around the country can certainly follow. An easy, cheap walking program three to seven days a week could certainly achieve the same outcome. There you go. Let your hokum patients exercise, but exercise mild to moderately. Thank you so much, Sarah. My pleasure. Thank you.